This little thing can tell you how much you've extracted your coffee. But who needs to know that and is it worth getting one for a home barista? Well, I've been doing some experiments with the defluid refractometer to see what it can teach us about espresso. Now this isn't a sponsored video, but this channel is supported by my generous backers on Patreon and hopefully now, people who buy my roasted coffee. I've been roasting for years, but I've just started selling my own coffee and if you're interested, you can get some from the link in the description. I couldn't do any of this without you all, so thank you so much for everything. This is a refractometer and it uses refracted light to tell you the level of dissolved solids in a droplet of liquid. The ones I've seen before cost between three and five hundred pounds and they seem to be a lot more focused on the coffee professionals market, but this one just came out for 200 US dollars and it has a pretty user-friendly UI that will help you figure out how extracted your coffee is. So it seems like it's probably more for the home espresso enthusiast. So let's put a droplet of espresso in this and see what we're working with. After you've zeroed it in with some distilled water, you just put a few droplets of coffee, in our case espresso, on this reader and push the test button. This will give us a TDS from which we can find our extraction percentage, which is measured by taking the yield of coffee multiplied by the total dissolved solids, or TDS in percent, divided by the dose. For espresso, a solid range for a good extraction would be around 18 to 25%. The Defluid Cafe app will do some of these back-end calculations for you if you just put in your dose and yield, and then it'll show you on a graph whether it thinks your coffee is strong or weak, or sour or bitter. According to the app, a higher TDS reading comes up as stronger and a higher extraction percentage comes up as more bitter, though I'll talk a little bit more about these judgments a little bit later in the video. First time I used this, I just thought, cool, and went on with drinking my morning coffee. But then I realized that this can be used to test all kinds of fun coffee experiments. What works, what doesn't, what niche and trendy barista hacks are gonna actually improve your extractions and which ones should be abandoned. Now I know what you're probably asking because I was asking the same thing. Is extraction percentage a good approximation for taste? That's a great question. And according to Scott Rayo, a legend in the coffee roasting space, you've probably never tasted a truly over-extracted espresso. In a blog post where he talks about the deference to a one to two ratio of espresso, he talks about how most places are serving under-extracted coffee and that more extraction generally means a better tasting espresso. So with that in mind, let's go on to my first test. For the first test, I wanted to see how the extractions are affected by pulling a short or a long shot, otherwise known as a ristretto and a lungo. A lot of people use a one to two ratio of coffee in to coffee out for a standard espresso, but I'm gonna try a one to one and a one to three ratio and see what the refractometer has to say about total coffee extraction. In between each test, I'm wiping the refractometer off with an alcohol wipe to make sure I get a consistent reading bitter. That is by far my favorite way to have this pretty light roast espresso. It says on the graph that this should be bitter, but for me, this just tastes fantastic. That's just a really nice espresso. So the TDS changes dramatically as you might expect, with the Lungo coming across as slightly weaker according to the Defluid app. Most of the coffee solids are extracted early on, with the amount being extracted dropping dramatically as the shot continues. In the end, the Lungo was my favorite tasting, with an extraction percentage of around 24%. But that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with a ristretto, and I'd probably prefer one of these with some milk to add a little sweetness and balance out that bitter strong flavor. The next test I'm doing is something that's pretty trendy right now, the WDT. I've been using one for quite a long time to reduce channeling and break up big boulders, but does this kind of redistribution actually help in a measurable way with total dissolved solids and increasing your extraction yield? Or could this just be a case of confirmation bias? On average, I noticed a very slight increase in TDS, though not as much as I might have expected. Now, part of this is that I'm using a DF83 in my cafe for the speciality beans and single dosing, and it is an incredibly good grinder. I did a review of it a while back, and it doesn't really need a WDT, because look at those grinds, they just come out so nice and fluffy. But if you are getting clumps in your grinder or other imperfections, then you may notice a much bigger difference with a WDT. 
The last test I want to do is adjusting my dose. A lot of people tend to stick with 18 grams in the basket, but especially for lighter roast espresso, I feel like it gives me a lot more leeway if I dose up to around 20. This experiment is a little bit harder to do consistently because I want to make sure that I'm actually measuring the difference made by dose and not other factors. I'm gonna change the dose and the grind size. I'm gonna try and end up with exactly the same extraction ratio in exactly the same amount of time. You can see that these two shots are basically exactly the same, but this is the 18 to 36 gram espresso. And this one is 20 to 40 grams. That's good. Mm. That does just taste much better. It's a lot clearer. It has that, that blueberry and vanilla flavor that I roasted to try and pull out of the bean. And so, yeah, I do think that the dosing up is definitely the right move for this one. Let's see if the TDS agrees with me. That's a pretty huge difference. As I expected, this was a pretty difficult test to run consistently, and I did get some big variations in the extraction yields from these cups. But overall, I would say that the higher dose did have a slightly higher extraction yield on average. I am totally open to being wrong about this. This is just what came out in my testing. Now I've just had way too much espresso, and as you can see, it's dark outside. I am not gonna sleep well tonight. Now this device isn't for everyone. They cost around $200 US, which is a lot cheaper than previously available refractometers. They also sell it with this pretty nice scale that has one of the best displays I've seen, plus a really good flow rate tracking app so that you can see on a graph how quickly your espresso is extracting. The scale is great, it has very fast reaction time, and it looks great. And did I mention that both of these products come in some of the best packaging I've ever seen for a coffee product? Now, I'm not quite sold on the graph for the refractometer. I just wouldn't trust a device like this to tell me how well my coffee is extracted, and I'd always recommend dialing in by taste. But the data you can get from it is undeniably useful. Personally, I'm gonna keep it here in my cafe to try out little experiments for drinks I wanna serve, and also keep it on hand for fun experiments experiments on this channel. So let me know in the comments below if this is something that you've had your eye on and if you're still interested in it. You can learn more about it through the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video, you wonderfully over-caffeinated people, and I will see you on the next one.